Your eyes do not deceive you. That is indeed more than 12 gigabytes per second read and more than 10 gigabytes per second write. You'd have to have a heart of stone to be unimpressed by those figures. All right then, onward with a review of this Lenovo Legion laptop. This Lenovo Legion 5A Pro 16 laptop has a trick up its sleeve and I am not referring to the 1610 aspect ratio screen which means that today's review is coming from Kit Goo rather than Kit Guru. I don't mean that at all. The hardware inside is conventional. Core i7-12700H, that's 12th gen from Intel along with some DDR5 memory and RTX 3060 graphics from Nvidia. However, this particular example has a pair of Gen 4 SSDs that have been striped in RAID. And as a result, the speed of the storage is absolutely monumental. Watch this. As you can see, this is a run of Crystal Disk Mark 8. The two SSDs are OEM versions of Samsung PM9A1, which are both Gen 4 M.2 NVMe. Intel sent us this laptop rather than Lenovo. And when we asked Intel about the fact it came with a RAID 0 array, they told us that there was a territory somewhere where you could configure your new laptop with a RAID 0 array. That does not appear to be the UK, where the default is a 512 gig SSD that you can increase to one terabyte. You don't seem to even have the ability in the UK to specify a second SSD to fill the empty slot. Where you can configure RAID 0 is something of a mystery. And that's the last time I'm gonna to refer to the storage in this laptop. While it's fun to test this particular configuration, I regard it as something of a red herring. When I get to the part of the review where I go through the performance charts, I'm gonna be comparing the Lenovo with a Razorblade 15 2022 that I reviewed quite recently, and also the MSI GE76 Raider. That might sound completely unfair, this laptop has a starting price of £1,800 here in the UK. The Razer is just under four grand. The MSI just over four grand. So twice as expensive. The specification tells part of the tale. The Lenovo packs a Core i7-12700H. The Razer a Core i7-12800H. And the MSI a Core i9-12900HK. The thing is, as we discussed in those reviews, a huge amount of the performance of those components depends on the amount of power that you can supply to them and how much cooling the laptop can provide. The Lenovo will supply a sustained 35 watts, 60 watts, or 115 watts to the CPU, depending on the setting. The Razer limits power to 35 watts to 65 watts, it's a very slender chassis. The MSI can push up to 110 watts into the CPU, but in our testing, the MSI actually drew 72 watts on the CPU. So the MSI ran its Core i9 at 3.3 gigahertz, while this Lenovo can run the P cores at 4.0 gigahertz sustained. We'll get to the performance charts later in this review where you will see this Legion has some surprising victories based on Lenovo's choices of power and cooling. But first, let's take a tour of the features, the ports and connectors. The 16 inch screen has a resolution of 2560 by 1600, a brightness of 500 nits and a refresh of 165 hertz. The battery is a decent sized four cell unit rated at 78 watt hours or 5052 milliamp hours. The Wi-Fi is Intel Wi-Fi 6E and we've got Bluetooth 5.1. The laptop weighs in at 2.49 kilos. The power supply and mains cable add another 1.05 kilos, so three and a half kilos all up. Ports and connectors. On the right hand side, we have a three and a half mil audio jack and a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A, which looks tailor-made for a wired mouse. On the left-hand side, we have a Thunderbolt 4 Type-C that also supports DisplayPort 1.4 and a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C. On the rear, we have more ports. There's Gigabit Ethernet by Realtek, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C, HDMI 2.1, two USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-As, and the power connector. You may have noticed there's a switch on the right hand side. It controls the shutter, 
for the mighty 720p webcam. I say mighty, it's actually incredibly average. Apparently there's so little space in the bezel that they can't have a mechanical little flick uh, cover over the lens. So instead they have this E shutter. Turning to the top of the laptop, you'll note we have descriptions for these ports and connectors on the rear. For example, that super speed USB has power delivery whereas this super speed USB is just a super speed. One point about these ports and connectors that might not be immediately apparent is that they are slightly recessed back from the cooling vents. If you take a dongle for a mouse and connect it like so, they say you can now walk around with the dongle installed and it's safe and protected from damage. And I would say that's exactly correct. The Legion 5i Pro is controlled by Lenovo's Vantage software, which has heaps of functions. So let's take a little look. Among other things, the Vantage software updates the BIOS and drivers, and it turns out we have a BIOS update waiting to be installed that must have popped up in the past day or so. Let's start with that. Within system tools, we can check for driver and BIOS updates, create macros for the keyboard, Hmm. Do they actually have a back key with Vantage? I don't think they do. Let's hit escape. No, back to device. Power. Oh, tells us about battery health. And if you like, you can protect your investment by extending the one year battery warranty by up to three years with low upfront cost. Media. Oh yes, that webcam. Lovely. You can adjust. Let's bump the brightness up, see what happens. Oh, put it back down, contrast. Oh, good Lord. Auto exposure. Actually, the auto exposure is doing a reasonable job, so let's leave that alone. Here we have a number of interesting features. Thermal mode is balanced. Performance and quiet mode, or alternatively, we can use the function and Q keys to toggle the mode. There we go, performance mode. There we have quiet mode. And there we have auto mode. Those are three distinct modes. The auto mode does not automatically select either quiet or performance. It is different to both of them. GPU overclock is less interesting than I hoped. Apart from the fact you have a warning that if you proceed, you might get into trouble. It doesn't really offer you a great deal of anything. Uh, you can bump up your GPU power by 10 watts. Uh, as we're on 90 watts already, we can leave that disabled. Network Boost is a quality of service thing that allows you to prioritize various apps. Auto Close, you can shut down various bits of software automatically when you're, for example, gaming. So, you know, turn off your email and such like. The irony there being is the nature of Intel's 12th gen uh, CPU with P cores and E cores really should make that unnecessary. GPU working mode, you can, if you choose, force it to run on the add-in GPU rather than running through the Intel GPU, or you can leave it in auto mode, i.e. Optimus. Touchpad lock, I think we all know about that. That is if you wish to avoid leaning on the touchpad and activating the mouse in error. Rapid charge, the battery in this laptop can indeed charge very rapidly. And down here we have Legion Spectrum for controlling the RGB in the keyboard. Three baked in modes, or you can customize the lighting and pick your own pretty pattern. Let's take a look at those three performance modes, do a quick run of Cinebench R23 and see how the laptop responds and just as importantly, how it sounds. We're in auto mode. Let's switch to quiet mode and go. CPU boosts to 45 watts. 
P cores are 2.4 gigahertz, E cores 2.3 gigahertz. Cooling system is whisper quiet. Cooling is ramping up very slightly. And the CPU is now going to sit there, happily operating away, nice and cool, drawing very little power. Next up, auto mode. And go. CPU boosting to 80 watts. 3.5 gigahertz on the P cores, 2.8 on the E cores. Holding steady at 80 watts. Fans are ramping up. And ramping further. and further and now the power is dropping down 65 watts P cores are running at 3 gigahertz the E cores at 2.6 CPU package just past 70 Celsius and the power's dropping towards 60 watts. And finally, performance mode. CPU package 130 watts, clock speed 4.1 gigahertz, temperature just below 100, CPU power fluctuating, but it's in the 105 to 110 watt territory. Clock speed for the P cores, 3.9 gigahertz. And as the cooling ramps up, Impressive speeds, but rather noisy. And so we come to the performance chart, starting with Cinemage R23 Multicore. And look, the Lenovo is at the top of the charts in performance mode, but it also does very well in auto mode. Turn it down to silent mode, meh, it's okay. Cinebench R23 single core, power doesn't play much of a role here, so we're going to dispense with the auto mode and just go for performance mode and silence mode, which are essentially identical, demonstrating the point that power really doesn't matter in this test. Core i7 does well. Blender 3.1, the classroom test. No surprises here, just as with Cinebench 23 multi-core, the Lenovo Legion in performance mode tops the chart in auto mode, it's doing well in silent mode. It comes towards the bottom of the list, but it still beats both the Razer and the MSI in their low power modes. 3D Mark Time Spy, the CPU score. Lenovo Legion doing really well here, surprisingly well. In silent mode, it does decently. Bapco Crossmark, the mighty MSI Raider with its Core i9 tops the chart but it is closely followed by that Lenovo Legion. Turn down the power from performance to auto and the Legion is doing well. In silent mode, it still beats both the MSI Raider and the Razer Blade in their low power modes. Gaming. You have to remember the screen has an unusual aspect ratio, so we're not running the Lenovo at 1920 by 1080 because Far Cry New Dawn doesn't offer that option. Instead, we're running at 1920 by 1200, so it's pushing more pixels than the other laptops. Plus, of course, we're pitching an RTX 3060 against a pair of RTX 3080 Ti's. Taking all that into account, the Lenovo does a decent job. Bearing in mind, we do have the option of going beyond 1080p or 1200 on this laptop. We can push the pixels to 2560 by 1600. And there you will see we can run at an average of 74 FPS and a minimum of 60. 
Far Cry 6. So rather than 1920 by 1080, once again, 1920 by 1200. And once again, the Lenovo's towards the bottom of the chart. But the frame rates are perfectly playable. And if we push up to 2560 by 1600, the average is 58, the minimum 51. It's playable, but not great. Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, 1920 by 1080. In this game, we can indeed run at 1080, so we're comparing apples with apples. Of course, the hardware in the Lenovo is far lower than the hardware in the MSI Raider and the Razer Blade, and you can see the result in the frame rates. Nonetheless, Lenovo does perfectly okay. And when we push the resolution to 2560 by 1440, you can see an average of 84 and a minimum of 53. Gaming at Quad HD on this laptop makes perfect sense. Watch Dogs Legion, we can run the Lenovo at 1080 rather than 1200. It tails the charts, the scores not great, the gaming experience tolerable. Battery test. The Lenovo Legion does a fine job and it beats out both the Razer Blade and the MSI Raider. Once again, we see AMD topping the chart by a country mile. What do I think of the Lenovo Legion 5i Pro 16? Well, let's first touch on the touchpad, keyboard and audio, as I haven't mentioned them so far. They're perfectly okay. Nothing special, certainly not bad. They just do a decent job. Keyboard has quite short travel, has RGB lighting that you can disable. Looks perfectly pleasant, nice and quiet. Touchpad's a reasonable size, responsive, and the audio, it's a laptop. The audio is absolutely fine. Pros and cons. Pros, the good points. Very fair price. Admittedly, this is a bit of a you know, review of special ringer with that uh, RAID SSD, but £1,800, that pleases me in a world where I've seen far too many laptops priced around four grand. So price is a good point. Impressive performance, albeit assisted by the Lenovo Cold Front 4 cooling system. In other words, it depends which mode you have the laptop in, but the performance of this Core i7 RTX 3060, yep, that's good. You get a good selection of ports and connectors, including Thunderbolt 4. I'm not sure I'm mad keen on the fact a good number of the ports are on the back, but the main ones are on the sides and they're easy to access. So that's positive. Fast battery charging. The first battery rundown test I did with this laptop, I did three in total. Uh, it drains the battery almost to nothing and then shuts down. I was stunned to see the laptop was pretty much fully charged after 30 minutes. I had to double check because I thought it was an error. Really impressive, that feature. The final pro is that the Vantage software is a one-stop control center for everything on this laptop, and it does a good job. There's some bits of fluff in there. It tries to sell you a few bits and pieces, but in the main, it's good. Cons, the negative points, the oddball screen resolution can affect gaming performance. You don't get all the options you might expect to see for resolution in various games. On the other hand, there are plenty of pixels on the screen. When all said and done, you can scale the display, but it does throw up a few quirks. The 720p webcam is unimpressive. Yes, it is. On the plus side, you do at least get a webcam but it feels to me like this Skype and Zoom culture is going to be with us uh, for a good while, if not forever. So webcams are now an essential feature of laptops, in which case, could we please have decent 1080p webcams? Thank you. And finally, the performance mode is too noisy for regular use. When the cooling is running flat out and the CPU is bouncing off 97 Celsius, sure you could do it once in a while, but that's not a daily driver. Overall, however, it's a good laptop and it's one that we recommend.